In America, this is the Ace Michael Show. Today, chatting about autism. Yes, sir. Autism is a very, very big disease. Its name alone is becoming like the the deal changer, like cancer. Like when you say cancer, people know you're not playing around. This is not a joke. You've, things have gotten real. You're talking about the C word. And autism is also a big one that will change the course of your meal. But a lot of people don't know so much about autism as they know about cancer. So today on the show, I brought a guest on who knows quite a bit about this topic. And please welcome to the show, first timer, Mr. Charles Dowling is with us today. Charles, how you doing, I'm sir? I'm doing very great, thank you for inviting me here. So let's jump right into it. I know you're gonna have a lot to tell us and inform us about. Uh, let's start with autism, because I know you got some other hustles that you, <laughs> you brought oh, on the yeah. show. You got some side hustles that are also some mental health issue hustles. But let's start with autism. Why is autism such a big deal? Well, it's a big deal because people still get bullied for it in schools. There's still a lot of discrimination despite the laws, you know, against, you know, ableism and all that in workplaces. And I have been, you know, the subject of such discrimination as well. And I feel like it's been very uh the underbelly you know of discrimination here you know especially you know here in the country and even in vegas you know as you know um autism is a big spectrum you know there's the people who have you know level one which is the people who can communicate you know pretty good and then there are ones who you know are mute you know they require different you know um methods of communication you know they're more sensory you know there's sensory issues involved so it's a pretty big, you know, topic that has just not really been discussed as much. Hmm. And so when we think of autism, um, we're not talking about Rain Man. We're not talking about um, colorful, festive, celebratory autism that's cool and interesting to talk about at parties. We're talking a little bit more like problematic uh, nerve disease and uh, mental challenges that are not funny they're not cute in most cases is that correct or am i um, an idiot yeah you're on the right track it's 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 still a positive thing i, I want to point out that you know it's not like a negative thing mm -hmm. you know there are you know autism is something that i personally do embrace however it's something that people still get you know there's still a lot of stigma against it for mm -hmm. se and it's not like Rain Man. It's not like, oh, you're, oh, my cousin's autistic, so let's go to Vegas and make money. Like, there's, this autism cannot be flipped into something that turns into a multi-million dollar Ponzi scheme. Oh, definitely, yeah, no. Right, interesting, which is too bad. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of have too. my heart set on that. But, uh, okay, so uh, tell us a little bit more about your work within the autis autism community, or would that be oh, the yeah. autistic community? Um autistic autism it's whatever you know people say everybody identifies in a different way it's kind of you know just like if you're in the lgbt community as i am as well you know it's just whatever you identify everybody goes with different identities but um basically i was diagnosed very late and it wasn't a formal diagnosis but it was when the doctors were actually testing me for ocd a mental mm -hmm. illness and when they were testing me out and you know just asking me questions uh they had diagnosed me verbally with Asperger's, which is now... I've heard of that too, but I don't know much about it. Well, Asperger's is level one autism. It's actually not a term that people often use anymore because it's now associated with a Nazi uh, who did some horrible bad things. So we do not like to use that term. A lot of people in the autistic community actually shed away from that term. Wait a uh, minute. Is he out? Is he... Is that where the name comes from? It comes, yeah. It comes from Asperger, Hans Asperger. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. So, so it, he was he was a Nazi. Uh, uh, was he a, in the uh, the what do they call it? I don't know the SS. He was a part of he, the. He was part of the party. I don't I don't have the historical context of where exactly, but uh, he was one of those who was responsible for separating uh, what he called quote unquote good autistics versus bad autistics, which we now know is not the case. It's just wow. you know who can communicate better, who cannot, and. That's Man, I thought people, I was yeah. evil until I hear some shit yeah. some Nazis did. I I thought I was a bad guy. But this is really and what what was wrong with those people? And where did they all go by the way? I, I hate to digress from what you're talking about, but it just popped oh, yeah, into no my worries. head like, you know, if like if you look at a film reel from the 1940s or mm -hmm. even the 50s, 
you'll see Adolf Hitler in a sea of Nazis. There's like millions of people were Nazis. They were part of that party, right? Millions. Yep, and people and, were blindly following them. Yeah, yeah. And, and you go, well, where did they all go? Where Where are they now? It's only 50 years later. Where are they? Oh, I, I think I want to say they moved somewhere to South America. There's a there's a movie about some that found refuge in uh, so, some country in South America. I do not know exactly, but uh, there's some context with that. I'm actually, uh, my mom's side is part Jewish, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. They kind of fled, you know, around that time too. Uh, but, yeah, they they also did stuff against the autistic community, and that's also why, you know, that's some of the discrimination that does, you know, continue until today you know that's nuts that is nuts okay so i did digress let's get back to what you're talking about which was way more on point um so you've been working in this community what is it the work that you do oh um well what i do is i just advocate online you know i just advocate you know for people who have this you know disease i am in the order of the arrow you know which is part of the boy scouts of america and I embrace myself, I express myself in the arts. I was a dancer at the age of 14, uh, which is, uh, they do like Native American style stuff, you know, you gotta be very respectful. Um, and it helped me, you know, break out of my eggshell. It really helped me express myself and express, you know, who I, you know, really was, you know? Because, mm-hmm. you know, even at that time, I, I didn't even know I had autism. I was still uh, what they call, uh, they call it, It'll come back to my head, but it's where you really just hide the effects of autism. Mm-hmm. And um, I, d- I didn't even know I was doing that until I realized I was diagnosed. Um, but I was expressing myself, and it was the only real place that I really had a sense of identity, you know, in those arts, mm-hmm. which I really found refuge in because I was personally bullied at a young age, too, and it was a, an escape. Now, how did you find out that you had autism, that you were autistic? Oh, oh the doctors just told me plain on. But, I had a I had a psychiatrist as well that told me. But were you experiencing any troubles or anything that led you to to think, wait a minute, is there something going on that I need to know more about? Like, like if I have, for example, if I have a little pain in my chest, I'm going to go to the doctor because I feel like there's heart issues. Right. Right. So did you have something that happened that you were like, you know what, I need to check this out. What's going on with me? Well, the OCD symptoms worsened, which I got diagnosed in 2019 went along with the autism you know at the age of 16 i am 20 now uh but you know from the time i was pretty much born i had speech problems Mm -hmm. i was in a preschool at the university of arizona uh their preschool uh for speech development because i was delayed in speech Mm -hmm. so um they they helped me through and they they helped me you know hide those you know um those uh stereotypical features of autism you know the the communication problems you know i want that that you know expressing yourself more uh specifically like i want i want this toy i want that um and i i knew there was something different about me Mm -hmm. compared to the other you know kids at school but i didn't know what it was you know i didn't know at that time and so kids actually bullied you which is interesting because you know autism i guess is a a disease to where you can't just look at and I apologize if I called it a disease and that offended oh, anyone. No, no, I, no. I'm un, unfortunately I don't know what else to refer to it as because that's what I grew up calling it. But um, what my point was was that this is uh, something that you can't look at a person uh, and say, "Oh, he's autistic." Just any more than you can look at a person and say, "Oh, he's gay," or "He's bi," or "He's you know gender gender neutral," or anything like. You are a handsome guy. You're obviously an intelligent guy. You dressed well. Your clothes are matching. Thank your you. shoes are tied. Uh, you're doing better than me today on a fashion sense. I love those beads you're wearing, too. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but no one's going to look at you and go, oh, this guy's got autism. Let's pick on him. You know, and sometimes, you know, I look at myself and I think, you know, wow, I, I really don't. I Sometimes it's like where you don't feel like your sense of belonging in the community because you don't down, you know, you don't have those, you know, stereotypes. But um, at the end of the day, you know, I know what I got. You know, I know it's something that I have to live with. I know it's something I got to embrace because if I don't embrace, you know, I will be, you know, mentally in the wrong place, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just do my best to, you know, show everyone, you know, this is what autism can also look like. Autism isn't just the person that's in a wheelchair, you know, having problems moving around. It could be somebody just like me who's just having a regular conversation 
about, you know, the weather today, you know, just the rain today, you know? Now tell me what are the challenges for an autistic person? Number one is sensory issues and communication issues. Uh, from the time I was young, I had some hard times with social cues. You know, uh, if somebody made a face and said, you know, it's time to go, or if somebody had that uh, look that you know where it's like, shut up, dude. <laughs> and you, uh, you don't see it until, you know, people actually let you know, oh, no, they, it looks like they want you to stop talking. It's hmm. it's those kind of things. And also sensory things, you know, uh, if you have a certain blanket and you don't like the feeling of that blanket, if you don't like the taste of a certain food, if you don't, because there's a there's a sensation that's just like, I want this out of my mouth. It's like touching a hot stove for us, per se. That's, that's right, the best right. way I can describe it. And uh, these uh, hot stoves, um, that's just what makes our anxiety. And uh, you talked about uh, disease, uh, yeah. mental illness. Uh, that is a big thing. Uh, many people in the autism community uh, have different mental illnesses. I have OCD and PTSD and depression diagnosed. And I did have a few suicide attempts in the past because uh, of this trauma that I had from the bullying later on. Um, Hmm. And it's it's a real big problem that's in the autism community, a lot of mental illness. And a lot of people are undiagnosed as well, uh, based off of studies as well. So it's it's very it's a very big issue. Let me throw something at you here. I'm just curious, Charles. So uh, in L.A., I went to the Scientology uh, Museum uh, that they have that's based on uh, psychiatry mm -hmm. and how terrible and horrific the industry of psychiatry has been to individuals um, how they used to say maybe a hundred years ago they used to say oh well, if you have autism then you're possessed by demons and then they would do these experiments and they would put people in hospital quote unquote hospitals yeah. and of course the drug uh, reinforcement therapy was terrible for a lot of people um, I'm leading to a question which is um, now we find that a lot more things are acceptable in our society and aren't considered horrendous diseases that we need to take you and send you off to a mental institution. Even homosexuality at one point was considered, oh my God, he's a witch. Oh, he's, yeah. he's, <laughs> we gotta burn him to see if he's really gay or not, right? <laughs> so all of this stuff. Do you think that autism and PTSD and AC, HD, I think I'm using Oh, ADHD. It. ADHD. Yeah. Do you think that these things will ever become commonplace in our society where we won't feel like, like will there be an over-the-counter pill that you can just take to, you know, measure out your autism? You know, that is something I do think about a lot because I do look at, you know, the way it's progressed today and there are some things that have changed and there are some things that have not changed, you know, mm -hmm. with psychiatry. Um, for one, you know, in the mental hospitals, I've been at because I was in mental hospitals after my attempts. Um, I had some good experiences and some pretty poor experiences. Uh, some people, you know, the pills, you know, some people were just hushed with pills just to make them go to sleep, which is not something that a pill is really meant for. It's meant to, you know, cure an illness. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, you know, there is, you know, I believe there are people working about that in middle school schools but the thing is i don't think there can be a 100 percent cure i think there's uh treatments that will eventually be proven to work but um to cure something i think is something that might be out of the question mm. interesting and so because we'll run out of time and i'm really sorry because i'm, oh. I'm very excited about what you're saying no, this so is interesting yeah <laughs> with with autism it is becoming more understood. It is becoming more, I don't wanna say commonplace, but for lack of a better word, I'm gonna say it's more accepted uh, in our society. It's not such a big deal for people. Like, um, I'm just gonna say this terrible thing, like Down syndrome. If a family knows that their baby might have Down syndrome, which now we can predict that in, yeah. the, uh, in the genealogy test, the genetic test will yeah. let us know when somebody's gonna have uh, a tendency towards uh, Down syndrome. And so then many of those parents might opt then to have an abortion if it's legal because they say, well, I don't want to put the kid through this. I, we don't want to have this experience, blah, blah, blah. That's a whole nother show whether you agree with that mentality or not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there is a, a reality. Now, autism, uh, and I do have a, a young cousin who has uh, who's autistic. Um, it isn't that big a deal 
for a lot of people, it seems. Am I right there? That that autism is something that can be pretty much managed and worked through? I, I know a mom who's done our show, and she has uh, two children that are autistic, and, you know, she's coping just fine. She's a single mom. She's doing her thing. She's working and taking care of her kids, and the two of them have autism. And she doesn't ever say, oh, my gosh, it's so hard on me. What did God, God gave me this burden. What? <laughs> right, <laughs> None right, of that yeah. stuff. She, it's just life. It is what it is. I will say compared to 20 years ago, it's much better. You know, uh, back in the day, they would just throw you in special ed if you were uh, communicating bad. If you weren't, you were kind of just left untreated, kind of like me. You know, it took me, you know, until my teenage years, hmm. you know, to do it. But um, I think now people are really starting to understand these things. You know, just like I said, like they're starting to understand, you know, um, you know, the LGBT community, just like they're understanding, um, you know, that there's no problem with interracial marriage, you know, like compared to <laughs> right. and that was yeah, a bad right. thing. Even just with immigrants, like my uh, Polish and Jewish family, you know, those things are more accepted now, like based off of religion. There's nothing wrong with, you know, it's just a part of these things that are slowly becoming more understood. If Absolutely. I could say that, yeah, yeah, well put. Okay, Charles, how do we find you on social media? Well, you can go to my Instagram. It's L as in lion, A as in apple, C as in cat. Uh, sorry, let me let me do that again. <laughs> L is in lion, A is in apple, C is in cat. Uh, no, sorry. I do, I am, I do I am, the same uh, my, thing. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> I don't send messages to yeah, myself, I so I forget. I go, I think it's... It's when you have to yeah. say the letters like that. So it's L is in lion, A is in apple, S is in song, C is in cat, F is in frog, D is in dog. And then that's uh, it's, uh, uh, Instagram. Uh, you can find my Facebook. Uh, it's Charles Francis Dowling, D-O-W-L-I-N-G. Um, I also have an older Instagram account, uh, which you can easily find. It's through um, uh, underscore period Charles period underscore Dowling. Uh, that was hacked, but you can also see some of the things I posted on there beforehand. I have kept a lot of those on uh, just for, you know, viewers that just are interested to view, you know. For about. the shits and the giggles. Yes. Yeah. All right, my man, Charles, thank you so much for being on the show today. Guys, thank you for listening, sharing, liking, subscribing. You know what's up. If you want to be on the show, we'd love to have you. And you know what I say? Live the life you love. Love the life you live. Thank you. <laughs>